63 by this adapted version of a dramatic play of these events. And because we don't hold gender boundaries here, Miss Jackie will be playing Joseph. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Reverend Stanley is King Herod. And we have wise ones from the east in the back of the choir. <laughs> Hear now these words from God. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in the province of Judea at the time when King Herod reigned. Not long after Jesus was born, magi, or wise ones, or seers from the east, made their way from the east to Jerusalem. They made inquiries. Where is this newborn who is the king of the Jews? When we were far away in the east, we saw his star. And we have followed its glisten and gleam all the way to worship him. King Herod began to hear rumors of the wise one's quest, and he and all of his followers in Jerusalem were worried. So Herod called all of the leading Jewish teachers, the chief priests and head scribes. Where does Hebrew tradition claim the long-awaited anointed one will be born? An ancient Hebrew prophet, Micah, said this, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are no poor relation. For from your people will come a ruler, who will be a shepherd of my people Israel. Herod called the wise ones to him, demanding to know the exact time the special star had appeared to them. Go to Bethlehem and search high and low for the Savior child. And as soon as you know where he is, report it to me so that I may go and worship him. Then Herod left, sent them to Bethlehem. The wise ones left Herod's chambers and went on their way. The star they had seen in the east reappeared, a miracle that, of course, overjoyed and enraptured them. The star led them to the house where Jesus lay. And as soon as the wise ones arrived, they saw him with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They unpacked their satchels and gave Jesus gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And thus, just then, Joseph, as Joseph had done a few months before, the wise ones had a dream warning them not to go back to Herod. The wise ones heeded the dream. Ignoring Herod's instructions, they returned to their homes in the east by a different route. After the wise ones left, a messenger of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up. Take the child and his mother and head to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you it's safe to leave. For Herod understands that Jesus threatens him and all he stands for. He is planning to search for the child and kill him. But you will be safe in Egypt. So Joseph got up in the middle of the night. He bundled up Mary and Jesus, and they left for Egypt, heeding this guardian angel's words.
few months had passed, Herod realized he'd been tricked. The wise ones were not coming back. Herod, of course, was furious. He simply ordered that all boys who lived in or near Bethlehem and were two years of age or younger be killed. He knew the baby king was this age because of what the wise men told him. This sad event had long been foretold by the prophet Jeremiah. Join me in responding with this. A voice will be heard in Ramah, weeping and wailing and mourning out loud all day and night. The voice is Rachel's, weeping for her children, her children who have been killed. She weeps and she will not be comforted. And all day, angels watching over me, my Lord. All night and all day, angels watching over me. until Herod died. This fulfilled yet another prophecy. The prophet Hosea once wrote, Out of Egypt I called my son. And after Herod died, a messenger of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. You may go home now. Take the child and his mother and go back to the land of Israel. For the people who were trying to take the child's life are now dead. So Joseph got up and took Mary and Jesus and returned to the land of Israel. Soon he learned that Archelaus, Herod's oldest and notoriously brutal son, was ruling Judea. Archelaus might not be any friendlier than Herod had been. Joseph was simply afraid. He had another dream, and in this dream, he was warned away from Judea. So Joseph decided to settle up north in a district called Galilee in a town called Nazareth, and this too fulfilled what prophets have taught. The Savior will be Nazarene. Good reading. Let the church say amen. amen. Watch with me this short clip from an animated story I'm sure we've all read called Charlotte's Web. He's saving you and they're saving him for Christmas. Templeton, what's Christmas? The day you'll be cured. But I'm not sick. Well, I didn't say you were sick. Uh-oh, that was a mistake. Yeah, typical rat. What? You gonna lie to the future football here? Okay, but it's a sad statement when I'm the most honest guy in the place. Templeton, what are you talking about? Come winter, the farmer will be checking you into the old smokehouse hotel. And the only checking out that happens is when people gather around and say, Mmm, check out that yummy sausage. Check out that sizzling bacon. Oh, so that's what that is for. Ain't for roasting chestnuts. He, he, he wouldn't. Humans love pigs. Well, they love 
cork. Mm. Oh, this is awkward, isn't it? Charlotte! Charlotte, is it true? Wilbur, few spring pigs get to see the snows of winter. No, I, I can't believe this. I, I won't believe it. Oh, Wilbur. It isn't fair. I want to live. I want to see the snow. And you will. I'm making you a promise right now. I am not going to let them kill you. You're a spider. You're little. They're huge. How are you going to stop them? I have no idea, but it's a promise. And promises are something I never break. Just don't you worry about it, Wilbur. Besides, it's a long time until Christmas. Okay, Charlotte. If you say so. He's saving... Fair. I don't want to die. Who knows what a person thinks about when they are constantly threatened with death. Amazing what a story about a pig can tell us. But this mirrors exactly where we are today in our text as we look at life, hashtag more life. It's so apropos, it's so relevant because we all want to live. Everybody wants to live. But yet as we close out 2019 and we look at 2020, we see that there is opportunity for us to uphold life, to, to, to extend life. Even as we look around us and we see destruction all around us, we see life being threatened all around us. Human life is sacred and should never be politicized, classified, minimized, forfeited, or used as expendable chattel. This story today as we close out Advent is so relevant because it demonstrates how life is viewed from the perspective of those in power and those whom Howard Thurman called the disenfranchised. We've been listening this Advent about the story of Jesus, and from its very beginning, its inception, it's a story of unlikely characters, old people, virgins, carpenters, shepherds, and even religious magi, who all recognized that the life of Jesus was something special and something that God had ordained. The Magi traveled from afar to witness the sacredness and the significance of this child, Jesus, who was born King of the Jews. They literally became messengers of the good news of the birth of Jesus. But on the other side, the folks in power, represented by King Herod, had something else to say. Herod, who was drunk on his own power, had something altogether different in mind for this child, Jesus. And if he had anything to do with it, this Jewish child would be no more. So Herod, this Roman king, knowing that the life of Jesus could bring something special to the Jewish people, he allowed his own insecurities and his own arrogance to lead him to not only call for but enact genocide on the Jewish people. We can think of some other things while we're there. You know the story. Every child, every male child that was two years and younger was slaughtered. 
you, you read it out of Jeremiah. Rachel weeping over her children. To enact a genocide is the ultimate in apathy toward a people's humanity and dignity. How do you just kill that many people? People. To enact a genocide is an ultimate in apathy toward human dignity and human life. Indeed, to regard a people as less than human is what is required. It has to be required in order for genocide or oppression to take root like that. Just want you to think about it. Now, as you know in the story, Herod never, you saw it uh, uh, displayed, Herod never found Jesus. And that's because God intervened with the angels who, 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 who spoke to Joseph and, 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 and instructed Joseph and Mary to get up and go. They literally became refugees running for their lives. Hmm. And as the people of God, we are called to protect life. We must protect life, especially those who are in a position to not care for themselves, those that are the most at risk or the most threatened to die or to be oppressed. So we, we, as the people of God, have to get up and go to, to ensure that, that life is sacred and secure for all people. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what is it that we need in order for us to go and protect life. What do we need? What, 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 what resources? What, what did Mary and Joseph and Zechariah and the folks in the Advent, what did they have? What did they have that utilize, they utilized to help them to go forward? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Come quickly with me and, and, and see in short three things that I lifted, I exegeted from the text that will help us as we move forward in 2020 and as we, we go to protect life. First of all, we need a divinely inspired purpose. Somebody say amen. amen. We're not just here to be here. We need a divinely inspired purpose. Zachariah had a purpose, more than a husband, more than a priest, more than a father. He was a righteous man who, 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 whose mission was to, was to bring to life the man that would uh, 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 usher in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Zachariah found his purpose. Mary was chosen to be Jesus' mother. Her, her devotion, her love for God, and her willingness to say yes uh, it was her, that was her purpose. Joseph, who was a tender man and who, who, who thought that his life was, was, was to go one way, realized that his purpose was much greater as he, as he protected Mary and took Mary and made sure that, that, that the Christ child, that, Jesus, that his birth would actually come to be. You remember Pastor Priest, where Joseph struggled. He, Joseph really struggled because you, you know how it is when you think your life is supposed to go one way, but you look up and your life is going in a different direction. Well, that may be because my purpose is not necessarily God's purpose. And we have to align ourselves with the purpose that God has for us so we can see what God sees. Jesus had a mission. His mission was to tell the people about God, to save life, and to ultimately create God's humanity, uh, God's empire for, you, for humankind. 
Jesus, uh, Emmanuel with us, had a greater purpose than just living for himself. And we are intrinsically motivated, better motivated, when we have a sense of our divine purpose. I'm not here to just be here. Now, I just, I just moved here. I just moved here in May. Amen. I just moved. And I thought, you know, I was coming to sunny Orlando and, you know, put the top down on my car and all of that, thinking, you know, I'm now retired and uh, everything looks good. But that's Mark's purpose, but that's not God's purpose. We have a divinely inspired purpose that God wants us to fulfill. Amen. Amen, somebody. The great Mahala Jackson, in one of her famous songs, said, If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody that he or she is traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Sometimes I feel that way, just, just going through the motions, but it's more to it than that. Yeah. If I can do my duty as a good Christian odd, if I can bring back beauty to a world that's upwrought, yeah. if I can spread love's message yeah. like the master taught, yeah. then my living yeah. shall not be in vain. Yeah. And so on today, December the 29th, 2019, here in Orlando at Joy Metropolitan Community Church, I just want to let you know that your purpose is wrapped up in God and you need to find your divinely inspired purpose. Uh -huh. Come quickly and see. Secondly, not only do we need a divinely inspired purpose, we need to be intentional. Somebody say intentional. 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 As we go through this Advent narrative, we see that every person that was involved, they, their intentions were clear. Zachariah's going was intentional. Zachariah was intentional about his work in the temple. He was intentional about naming John. Intentional about supporting his wife Elizabeth and intentional about fulfilling his ceremonial obligations once John was born. Mary was intentional about her engagement to Joseph. Mary was intentional about her praise for God, Mary's song. Mary was intentional about submitting to what God wanted, not what I want, but what you want. And Mary was intentional about protecting Jesus once he was born. The Magi were intentional about leaving the east on their way to the west to find the child born king. They were intentional about their gifts, gold that represents a king, frankincense which represents a priest, and myrrh which represents a healer. They were intentional about their movement and they were intentional to not to return to Herod. Somebody say amen. amen. And here we are, Joy Metropolitan, and one of, the, one, of the, one of the reasons why I fell in love with Joy so quickly is because of, of your mission and your intention, amen, to feed. A lot of folks need to be fed, and not, they need to be fed, is that right? We saw that on, uh, on Thanksgiving when, 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 when 800 or so uh, uh, families, were, where bags were given out. It's to feed, it's to feed. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of my mouth. But that is to feel. People, people, people's lives need to be filled looking for purpose, looking for significance, trying to understand what's going on all around them, trying to deal with the oppressors and the people around them. It's to feel and then to fight. Yes. Amen. To fight for those that cannot fight for themselves. Yes. Uh, yeah, like, the, like, like our children on the border, amen, of Mexico. Yes. 
to, to, to fight for them. They cannot fight for themselves like our, like our young ones that are, that are taken in human trafficking. To fight for those who are not able to fight for themselves, that are, that, that are disenfranchised and living, amen, in, in situations that they do not want to live in. And so that is we have to be intentional about what it is that God wants us to do. As we move into 2020, joy, we have to be intentional. And then uh, lastly, we need divine guidance. Not only do we need a divine purpose, not only do we need to be intentional, but we need divine guidance. You know why I need divine guidance? Because I cannot do it on my own. I don't have enough, I don't have enough in intellect, I don't have enough wisdom, I don't have enough ingenuity. I, I, I need some help from some place, amen, other than myself that might help me to do what it is that I need to do. In this Advent narrative, we see that Zachariah, Mary, and Joseph each were divinely guided by God. We saw an angel visit Zachariah. We saw an angel visit Mary. We saw an angel visit Joseph. We saw divine guidance through dreams as Joseph had a dream. Each time Joseph and Mary were to get going, they were guided by an angel of God. The Magi were guided by a star. They had a dream as well, amen, that they might avoid King Herod. Mary and Joseph were also guided by their circumstances. Think about it. Elizabeth was barren, could not have children. Mary became pregnant in an unusual way. Joseph had to deal with an engagement that went sideways. All of us have circumstances, uh, but in the midst of our circumstances, we can still find God's guidance. Is that right? All I'm trying to tell you is that, amen, there is divine guidance if we would just look for it and seek for it. Is that right? Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, amen, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not rely on your own understanding in all your ways. Somebody say all. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct your steps. Is that right? We can find divine guidance not only, not only in a mystical way like Joseph and them did, but we can find divine guidance through prayer. Yes. Every week our pastor stands up here and says that we are going to storm heaven on your behalf because we have a God, amen, who hears our prayers, right? And we can seek, we can seek divine guidance through him. But not only that, we get divine guidance uh, by the counsel of other folk. Amen. It's good, amen, to not think that you have all the answers yourself. Somebody else has some answers as well. And so you need to seek the counsel of somebody else. Is that right? Proverbs eleven fourteen says, without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow, the better your chances. And so in other words, amen, it's, it's good to listen to somebody sometimes because you don't have all the answers yourself. And so as I close this morning, I want you to understand that there is more life. Somebody say hashtag. hashtag. More, life. more life. Yes, I believe there are angels among us. We can be messengers flying in the face of fear. We can say no to destruction wherever we see it. Is that right? Yes. But, I, but I like what Jesus said because Jesus said it best. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I come into the world to give you life. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give up my life so that you might have life. Is that right? Yeah. Hashtag more life. And as we go into 2020, and as we look at all the destructive things around us, we have to declare and decree. I don't know about you, but I plan on living. Is that right? I want to live and not die. So just like Charlotte, when she was speaking to Wilbur, 
I get emotional when I think about it. Wilbur is standing there upset, knowing that his time on life is short. He had only been fed that he might get to the slaughterhouse and be used as somebody's hand for Christmas. But Charlotte said, no, 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 no. I promise you, Wilbur, you will not die, but you shall live. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I know I'm going to do it. And that's how I feel today. I don't know how God is going to do it, but God's going to give us life. Somebody say, yeah. God's going to give us life. Is that right? I might not have a lot of money, but I'm going to have life. I might not be good looking, but I'm going to have life. I might face obstacles, but I'm going to have life. Somebody say, yeah. That's how I feel about it. We have to be the messengers of God to protect life and to ensure that folks have life. The children in the schoolhouse, they're going to have life. Those at the border that are the immigrants, that our leaders don't have enough sense to do what's right. They're going to have life. Is that right? The LGBTQ youth that are homeless on the street, they're going to have life. Is that right? The elderly who don't know how they're going to make it on tomorrow, they are going to have life. And that's because in God we can live. In God we're going to live. I don't know about you, but I plan on living. I shall not die, but I'm going to live. Everybody else going into 2020 saying I'm going to live. I don't care how bad my situation. I don't care what the odds are. I'm going to live. turn but it's gonna be my turn for one minute. Come on, Give preacher. One minute. Come on, preacher. I'll back you up. I know some of you and I know your situation. I know what you've been going through. Some of you I don't know and I have no idea what you're going through but I claim as you so boldly and prophetically proclaim that we have life and we're gonna have more life in this year. So if you see someone who needs a little life, give them some life. And life means love and peace and hope and joy. Y'all, we ain't got nothing else. We got some joy to give away. And life is going to get hard, harder for some, right? But I proclaim that Jesus said life is life in abundance. And it may not look like you thought it was going to look. But Jesus wins every single time. May Jesus win in us and through us more life in abundance in Jesus' name. Welcome Psalmist Michelle Burnett to the stage. Amen. I just want to thank God for being in the house of the Lord just one more time. Yeah. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shame my 
Because 